Hi, my name is Wendy Rudd and I'm going to be doing the Talking Cafe today. Some of you probably already know me from earlier broadcasts. I am hoping that I am live and like all of us, we wait for a comment to pop up from our colleagues to say, hi, yes, we can see you. Um, we're actually using um, the StreamYard and they define it as a studio that we're entering now. Um, so there we go. Thank you, Andrea. Um, she has confirmed that I am live. So today, 24th of July, it becomes mandatory that we wear a face mask or face covering in the shops across England. Now, I thought long and hard how to present this to you. And I've decided we have the serious stuff. We get that out of the way first, and then we can have a little bit of fun afterwards. And we can do things like uh, make our own face mask using a sock. So what is the government guidance about wearing face masks and face coverings? First, what is a face covering? In the context of the coronavirus outbreak, a face covering is something which safely covers the nose and the mouth. You can buy reusable or single use face coverings. These are now available to buy in most shops and supermarkets. However, you may find that you've got something suitable already at home. You can use a scarf, a bandana, a handmade cloth covering, but you must make sure that they fit securely around the side of the face. A face covering is not PPE and it cannot be used in hazard or risk situations such as medical and industrial settings. Face coverings are instead largely intended to protect others and not the wearer against the spread of the infection because they cover the nose and the mouth, which are the main confirmed sources of the transmission of the virus that causes the corona infection. If you want to find out more about the differences between surgical masks, PPE, face masks and face coverings, you can actually go to the Medicines and Health Products Regulatory Agency and have a look. Um, I've got a an address for you, which I can pop up later if you are wanting to go there. Next is when to wear the face mask covering. Now, remember that this does not include Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. We are actually talking about England. And in England, you must wear a face, mask, a face covering by law in the following settings. If you're using public transport, indoor transport hubs, and this means airports, rail and tram stations and terminals, maritime ports and terminals, bus and coach stations and terminals. If you're in shops and supermarkets, and that means places that are open to the public that wholly or offer goods or service for retail or hire. Um, you must wear them for in indoor shopping centres. If you're going into the banks or the building societies, the post office, including uh, short-term loan providers, saving clubs, money service businesses. You are expected to wear face coverings immediately before entering any of these settings and you must keep it on until you leave. You're also strongly encouraged to wear the face covering in other enclosed public spaces where social distancing may be difficult and where you come into contact with people that you don't normally meet. So face coverings are also needed in NHS settings, including hospitals, primary or community care settings, such as your GP surgeries. They're advised to be worn in care homes, and please remember that individual settings may have their own policies that require you to take other measures. 
The bigger question probably is where does it not apply? So face coverings are required to be worn in any shops, including food shops and supermarkets, but they're not required in hospitality settings, including restaurants with table service, bars and pubs. They're not required in entertainment venues, such as cinemas and casinos. Visitor attractions, such as heritage sites and museums, exercise and sport venues, such as gyms. However, where a shop is within another premise that doesn't require you to wear that face covering, such as a museum, they then you, you have to, if you're going into that shop, put your face covering on. Check the signage upon entry and exit to know when this is going to be the case. When can you remove your face covering? You can remove your face covering in order to eat and drink if reasonably necessary. I do love that sentence. It's going to be terribly difficult if we don't remove the mask to eat and drink. Okay, this should be in an area that is specifically for the purpose of eating and drinking, such as a food court. If a shop or a supermarket has a cafe or a seating area where you can eat and drink, then you can remove your face covering in this area only. You must put your face covering back on when you're leaving that area. Now, a little add on, um, the East Midland Ambulance Service have done a fantastic little drawing to highlight um, what they have said about don't remove your face mask down to your chin because your neck could be an exposed area. And if you're bringing that mask down, it's touching what could possibly be the contaminated area. And then, of course, what are you doing? You're going to pull your face mask back up because you haven't taken it off and you risk running the chance of becoming infected with germs, bacteria, virus, whatever. Okay, um, enforcement measures. There have been people giving views, et cetera, et cetera, on what they think. So again, we're going by the government to compliance. Enforcement measures for failing to comply with the law. Measures can be taken if people do not comply with the law without a valid exemption, which I'm going to go through with you in a moment. Are you aware that shops, supermarkets and other premises where face covering is required are encouraged to take reasonable steps to promote compliance with the law? They could refuse entry um, if for those who don't have a valid exemption. Transport operators, they can actually deny you access to the public transport services if the passenger is not wearing a face covering or direct them to wear one or leave the service if, they don't, if they're not wearing the face covering. If necessary, the police and the Transport for London officers have enforcement powers which include issuing fines of up to £100, which if you pay in 14 days can be half to 50. So the big question for everybody is, when do you not need to wear the face covering? You don't need to wear the face covering if you have a legitimate reason not to. What does that mean? What does that include? Well, it includes, but is not limited to, not being able to put on or wear, remove a face covering because you have a physical or mental illness or impairment or disability. If putting on, wearing or removing a face covering is going to cause severe distress. If you're traveling with or providing assistance for someone who relies on a lip reading, to be able to lip read to communicate, they don't need to wear one. To avoid harm or injury or the risk of harm or injury to yourselves or others. To avoid injury or to escape a risk of harm 
and you do not have a face covering with you, to eat or drink if reasonably necessary, in order to take medication, if a police officer or other official requests that you remove your face covering, and then we come to young children under the age of 11. The Public Health of England, the PHE, do not recommend face coverings for children under the age of three. Now, Pro Professor Viv Bennett, the chief nurse of the PHE, has issued an urgent warning to parents regarding face masks for young children and has urged that parents not put masks on children under three. She actually said PHE has been made aware that the face coverings for babies and very young children are available in England. The guidance is clear that children under the age of three years should not wear face coverings or masks. These masks should not be used as they are potentially dangerous and can cause choking and suffocation. We now come on to how to wear your face covering. A face covering should cover your nose and mouth while allowing you to breathe comfortably. It should fit comfortably but securely against the side of your face and it should be secured to the head with ties or ear loops. It should be made of a material that you find to be comfortable and breathable, such as cotton. Ideally, include at least two layers of fabric. Um, the World Health Organization actually recommends three, depending on the fabric that you use. And unless it's disposable, it should be able to be washed with other items of laundry according to the fabric washing instructions and dried without causing the face covering to be damaged. When wearing a face covering, you should wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water for 20 seconds or use a hand sanitizer before popping your face covering on. Avoid wearing it on your neck and forehead. Avoid touching part of the face covering in contact with your mouth and nose as it could be contaminated with the virus. Change the face covering if it becomes damp or if you've touched it and avoid taking it off and putting it back on a lot in quick succession. For example, if you're leaving the shop and then entering another shop on the high street, you're just permanently putting it on and off. When you remove your face covering, wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water for 20 seconds or use your hand sanitizer again. Only handle the straps, ties or clips. Do not give it to somebody else to use. If it's single use, then dispose of it carefully in the residual in the in the residual waste bin and not recycle and we've all heard and seen how people have been littering and just leaving them lying around please think before you bin and make sure it's going to where it should be and it's not going to be a bit of litter um if it's reusable then wash it in line with the manufacturer's instructions at the highest temperature appropriate for that fabric. And then wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water for 20 seconds or use a sanitizer once you've removed it. Making your own face coverings. If you want to make your own face covering, instructions are widely available online as I've discovered when I was looking at what I was going to do on presenting today. Okay, um, I'm sorry, sorry, I'm glancing at my um, comments that are coming up, trying to keep on top of both. And I would love to say good morning to Christelle and Carolyn and Ali and John, John Hunt. Unfortunately, I cannot read. So good morning, Wendy. There's quite a bit of 
confusion for residents who are or unable to wear face coverings. Does CCS or your good self have any advice about this, please? Possibly wearing badges, etc. They're concerned about possible rudeness from other shoppers. That's a very, very good question. Um, if I carry on, you'll there will be more further down the line. But yes, um, you're right. Um, it's a bit like with disabilities. Um, you don't have to see it to have one. And this, unfortunately, is um, causing problems and has already, even though it wasn't, you know, it, it didn't come into effect till today. Um, there have been incidents that I've heard of. Um, and I'm sure that um, you know how good people are at solving an issue, something will become the norm, I'm sure, sooner rather than later. I haven't heard of anything just yet. Um, making your own face coverings. Um, if you want to make your own face covering, instructions are widely available, um, as I found out. Um, we don't endorse any particular method, um, but just be considerate of the materials and fabric that may irritate different types of skin, is what we would say. Emerging evidence suggests that the risk of transmission may be reduced by using thicker fa fabrics or multiple layers. However, the face coverings should still be breathable. Children should make face coverings under the supervisions of adults, and face coverings for the older children should be secured to the head by using ear loops only. Okay, now, if you want more information on how to make coverings with all materials that are from around the home, um, it's not an endorsement, but um, the government site actually has put up uh, the Big Community Sew website which the address for is literally www.bigcommunitysew.co.uk and you will find step-by-step -step video tutorials on how to make face coverings. And because I was going through the mandatory government um, compliance, uh, obviously this is was my first sort of stage as to what they were on about and um, as I say, they do a simple face covering. And for this, you will need um, two or three 25 centimeter by 25 centimeter squares of cotton fabric, two pieces of elastic, 20 centimeters, uh, or string or cloth straps, needle and thread and scissors. I am not a sewer. Um, you would cut your squares and stack them one on top of the other. I do have drawings. Here we go. Um, you would fold. Hang on, let me just, there we go. You would fold over one side by 0.75 of a centimetre hem and then repeat it on the opposite side. To you and I, in simple instruction, you literally fold over your material, okay? And then you fold, you channel it and fold a double layer, 1.5 centimeters along each side and stitch it down. Step three, you would run a 20 centimeter length of elastic string elastic string or cloth strip through the wider hem of each side of the face covering, i.e. you're going to be looping it in. Okay. And then you gently pull on the elastic so that the knots are tucked inside the hem. You gather the sides of the covering on the elastic and adjust so that the covering fits your face, then securely stitch the elastic in place, keeping it from slipping. The elastic loops fit over the ears. And there's a little diagram 
of a completed nice and simple mask. Okay, face coverings should not be used for children under the age of three. We've already covered that one. And always take care um, to use the equipment safely and avoid injury. Children should follow the instructions with adult guidance only. Now, as same more goes along, sorry, I've lost, there we go. One thing I did want to reiterate before leaving the more serious side of what the compliance is, what the guidelines are, is just to say, remember that if you or your child's unwell with symptoms of COVID, then you should get a test, stay at home until you get the results. If you're worried, then dial 111 and speak to a doctor. So having covered the guidelines, um, nothing raises the spirit more than having a good laugh. So now on the lighter side of life, I am going to show you how to make the sock mask. Now, I am possibly the least arty crafty person I know. I certainly am in my family. Um, I certainly wasn't in the queue. Now, this is a no sew sock mask. Okay. So you just take a sock. The husband will be quite upset when he discovers that I've practiced and I'm going to show you on one of his socks. So you get your sock, trainer socks work best, the nice little ones. Okay, and take your sock. And I would say, if you do that, you know you're going to get it long enough for who it's for, because let's face it, we're all different. So then if you cut, seriously, across, keeping the heel, so we have the heel, the top, and we've removed that. Then what we're going to do is we are going to keep the heel, hold the heel. I'm left-handed, so it might confuse some of you. And we cut. So we now have the sock. We then fold it in half. Okay, and then what we're going to do is where we cut along the front so the heel stays intact, we are going to cut into here, make sure it's as even as you can get it, okay, and then you're going to be snipping the ear loops as it were. And you may have to do adjust these later on, depending on size. So now, believe it or not, we're ready. So when you open it up, there is your sock. Oh, turn it up the other way. So the heel is where the nose is. You place one loop on the ear, over the nose. There we go. And there you have one perfect face mask. Now, that's only a single skin. So what you can do with the bit you've chopped off is actually just lay in. You may, may want to cut it so it's single and pop that inside. Then you have a double filter. It is as simple as that. If I can do it, anybody can. Types of face masks. We've got our homemade face mask. We have our single use face masks. Now, what I didn't know when I very first got mine, because I was very kindly handed one, was it is blue side out. And then along one end, you will have a bendable. So it is blue side out, place on, once on, pull it into shape, bend it over the nose. And that is your disposable, whoops, face mask. 
And then you have a variety, in fact, a plethora now, of reusable. This is a neoprene one. And again, covers, very simple, just holds for the ears and can go in the washing machine, reused. However, if you don't have a face mask and you're thinking, gosh, what am I going to do? The new laws come in. I haven't been out yet. When I do go out, 1st of August, I don't have a face covering. It doesn't matter. You can use a bandana. You can use a scarf, anything. You literally fold it so it's more than one layer. And again, place it over, secure it. Now, again, what I am going to reiterate is do not, when you come out of the shop, do this. For the same reason as a face mask, if you're just dropping that and wearing it as a scarf, if there is contamination, when you then raise it up, it will contain the germs and the virus. So what I would say is to take it off, make sure you remove it and pop it into your bag. Okay. So I think that's us pretty covered on face masks. So a little bit of humour now. Um, as I was doing some research and looking at everything that was happening and what we could use, I came across a little chalkboard ad on Facebook. And when I read it, I thought, I've really got to share this. This, this, you know, this is just so good. And the title was Treat Your Mask Like Underwear. And the rules were, do not touch or adjust, especially in public. Do not borrow or lend. Make sure it fits, make sure the fit is tight but comfy. Make sure it's clean. Wear it the right side out. If it's damp, change it and don't go commando. And as I say, that was from a chalkboard today, which I thought was absolutely fantastic. Which now brings me to my usual clothes. And again, I've written a little poem about the face mask and keeping safe. So in England, we have our trust to follow directives is a must. Part of keeping safe, they do ask when shopping, we now wear a face mask. So that safe we can all remain and from breaking the rules, we refrain. The temptation I know is great. As for this lockdown, we do hate. But take the time to stop and think for it could be later than you think to keep your family safe and ensure you'll be together forevermore. Please stop and think about what you do to keep us safe is down or up to you. Now, that brings face masks to a conclusion. If you would like um, us to cover something for you, if there's an area you would like more knowledge, whether it is what support is out there for dementia, it could be anything, anything that's, you know, anything that's globally people are struggling with, do let us know because we can then steer these for you. That's what we're here for. We're here to help you. Um, and as you know, Mondays is covered by West Somerset. Tuesday, our team from Taunton. In fact, this uh, next week is actually going to be Linda Burton. Wednesday, it will be the Mendip and it's going to be Bella Lapwood. Thursday is Sedgemore and that's actually our lovely Lauren Giddens and Lucy Parkinson. And then it's back round to Friday where it is South Somerset. But as I say, location is irrelevant. If there is something we can help you with, or information you want to know and you feel others would also like to hear about it, do let us know. That brings today to a close. I thank everybody that has been watching and no doubt I will see you again in the close future.
Take care. Stay safe. Wendy Rudd, signing off. Bye-bye.